Welcome back to Run the Atlas. Today, I'm talking about the San Francisco Peninsula and the things you need to know before traveling here. If you've tuned into our channel, you've seen that we've covered this region extensively. Both my brother and I are former Bay Area residents. So today I'm breaking it down to the top nine things you need to know before traveling to the San Francisco Peninsula. Whether you're in town as a city escape, or maybe you work at one of the Silicon Valley based companies and you want to explore, or maybe you just landed in SFO and you want to see what there is to do in and around the region. Stay tuned to the end because we've got you covered. So let's get acquainted with the region. I'm going to put the map right here. We are nestled in between the San Francisco Bay and the Pacific Ocean, and it's just minutes from the city, 20 minutes in fact. If you've landed in SFO, you're already on the peninsula. This region has the sophistication of a world-class city and much of the amenities that you get in the city, but with small town charm. You may have heard of many of the cities located on the peninsula, but we have Palo Alto, San Mateo, Redwood City, Half Moon Bay, and Pacifica, just to name a few. So the first thing that you may not have known about the San Francisco Peninsula is it has 60 miles of Pacific Coast frontage. And some of this is the most unexplored stretches of coastline in California. Driving here, it feels like a car commercial. We rented a convertible just to experience this fully, but I recommend that you take the coast road south of the city through Pacifica down to Half Moon Bay, and you'll find some of the most beautiful beaches. Our favorites are the Montero State Beach, and there's also a beach called Devil's Slide, so check those out. So the second thing you might not have known about is just how rural this area is. It's known for having Silicon Valley and some of the top companies in the world based here, including Oracle, Meta, Google, Electronic Arts, PlayStation, just to name a couple. But just within a few minutes drive of these headquarters, you can see some of the most ecological wonders in the world. You can see exquisite nature, coastal redwoods, wetlands. You can head into the Santa Cruz mountains and you can see farm stands alongside the road where you can get fresh fruit. You can see windy country roads and it feels like you're a complete world away from some of these high-tech companies. It tends to be a little bit warmer here than the city. In fact, the average temperature is around 68 degrees year round, which makes it the perfect place to visit whenever you come here. One thing to note is that the Bay Area's famous fog does trickle in over the Santa Cruz Mountains and across the Pacific Ocean. So be sure to bring layers while you're here. There's something to do year round here, just to name a few things. There's the Fayololi Gardens. It's beautiful in spring when all the flowers are in bloom, or if you're here in wintertime, they have a winter wonderland where they transform this historic house and the beautiful gardens into an amazing winter wonderland with a light tunnel and every inch is covered in lights. It's spectacular. You can also come here for the Pumpkin Festival, which is in October in Half Moon Bay. You can also come here for restaurant week, which we just attended It's in the end of May. And it's an amazing time to try out different restaurants. Oh my goodness. We tried everything from Filipino food to French food. There's cuisines to suit every taste bud here. And I'd love to know what your favorite activity is to do in the San Francisco Peninsula. Comment below. The next thing to note about the San Francisco Peninsula is about transportation. We recommend that you rent a car while you're here. The best way to explore this region is by car and feeling the freedom of the roads. In fact, some of these roads are just so epic. We really love the 280 highway. This is named one of the most scenic highways in California and it goes right up against the Santa Cruz mountains. You can see deer even along the road and it really feels like you're in a car commercial. PCH is another beautiful road. And some of the roads that wind through the Santa Cruz Mountains are epic. Speaking of the Santa Cruz Mountains, they provide some of the most beautiful natural backdrop to this region. They tower at about 3,786 feet high. 
and they even have wineries within the Santa Cruz Mountains. We were blown away by how many different recreational activities are available in the San Francisco Peninsula. We have everything from some of the most windy and interesting biking paths through Woodside and the Santa Cruz Mountains. And on the bay side, there's a natural area called the Bear Island Ecological Reserve with many bike paths. And it's an estuary there, so you'll see a lot of bird life. We took a tour with Eco Bike Adventures. Check them out on the link below. But you can rent bikes and they actually bring the bikes to you. And you can take an eco bike, which is a really great way to kind of turbocharge your way through some of the bike paths and really cover a lot of ground. You can also go kayaking. One of our favorite places to go kayaking is in the Half Moon Bay. We also really enjoyed going surfing in Pacifica. This is just south of San Francisco City and you can go surfing here at one of the most beginner friendly beaches we've ever seen. We went with a company called Adventure Out and again they brought the gear all to us. They brought the wetsuits, they helped us suit up, they showed us how to prepare for the waves while we were still on the sand and we knew exactly what to expect and we felt so comfortable getting in the water and we got to ride a few waves for the first time which was so cool. It's definitely the most quintessential California experience. You have to check them out. And next, you can go horseback riding on the beach, guys. Horseback riding on the beach, that is one of the most exotic things I've ever done. I didn't even think I'd be able to do that in California, let alone just minutes from the city. The horses, they go out onto this beautiful trail that takes you through a ravine. And then all of a sudden there's these massive cliffs and you find this little windy path that takes you onto the sand and the horses are walking along the sand. And it is the most beautiful windswept cliffside beach I've ever seen. And you're gonna wanna check them out. They're called Seahorse Ranch. Blink and you would miss them along PCH, but book your tour with them. Even if you're a single rider or you're here on a birthday or with a group, you'll love it. It's super fun. The next thing to note is that there are so many different hotels, something to fit every budget, whether you're looking to really splurge and go all out and have a luxurious experience. For that, we recommend checking out the Four Seasons Palo Alto. They have hospitality to a T at this hotel. And just so many details were thought of in this hotel that it was beyond our wildest dreams. The second hotel that you're gonna wanna check out if you're here with your family and you just arrived at the airport so you're kinda tired, you're gonna wanna check out the Residence Inn by Marriott. This was just built, it's in Millbrae, and they have beautiful suites, so they even have a little kitchenette in the room, so it's really great if you're here with your family or for a longer stay. But if you want more of like a retreat along the coast, I have a couple other options for you that I'm gonna splice in right here. Did you know that in the San Francisco Peninsula, 72% of this region is preserved open space. That means there's tons of room to explore and capture views. A lot of times you can even go to the top of different peaks and you can see glimpses of the city. So it's really magical. We were driving along this road called Club Drive and look at this sunset view. You can see the bridge the Golden Gate Bridge, you see the Salesforce Tower, all the way from up here. This is how close we are to the city, guys. Come down to the peninsula. The next thing to note about the San Francisco Peninsula is that it's filled with some really charming downtowns. Each little city within the San Francisco Peninsula has its own downtown of some sort. Some of them are more notable than others, but we really recommend checking out downtown Palo Alto, for example. They have a road it's completely blocked just for pedestrians, and you can enjoy some of the most iconic coffee shops. You can have some of the best dining experiences, similar to what you'd get in the city right here. We also recommend checking out downtown Redwood City. This is another really cute downtown. They also block off the streets here so you can walk around. I also recommend checking out Half Moon Bay. They have a gorgeous downtown. Some of the buildings date back to the late 1800s, which is really old for us Californians. But they have murals on the wall. They have little jazzy cafes and bakeries. One of the best sandwich shops that has been named 
best sandwich on the coast for years after years. And we also recommend checking out Pacifica. They have a pier here that is one of the most famous piers for crabbing. You can also spot some of the surfers, which is really fun too. Another thing to note is that there are a ton of hidden gems within the San Francisco Peninsula. Some of our favorites include the Polgas Water Temple. It appears almost like something out of Greece and it's surrounded by cypress trees. A lot of people do photo shoots here or go picnicking. Another place you wanna check out is the Gamble Gardens in Palo Alto. And there's so many beautiful botanicals here. It's donation based, it's absolutely free to visit. You can also check out the Arizona Cactus Garden. This is a real Arizona style cactus garden that you would see like in Arizona, but it's on the Stanford campus and it's absolutely free as well. These are very famous places to do photo shoots. So there you have it. I hope that you learned something new about the San Francisco Peninsula and get to check it out very soon. Links in the description below to some of the places that I mentioned in this video. And be sure to check out the San Francisco Peninsula's website if you're booking a trip here to get acquainted and to get destination information. Be sure to stay tuned because we have some really cool travel vlogs coming up. Our next trip is to Big Bear. So be sure to like and subscribe down below and stay tuned for that.